why what i think is by far the best electric truck on the market is consistently being snubbed by the social media in favor of the rivian r1t and the ford f-150 lightning both fine trucks but still well don't ask me because i don't know but my guest tom malogny the host of the state of charge youtube channel does because he disagrees with me well I will state my case first, then he will join me in a few minutes and state his. I will also reveal the results of the community poll on the subject. And as always, I will take questions from you, my live audience. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars and where right here, I reveal the truth behind the electric car headlines. Well, you came to the right place. Just don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right. I am live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I have become a digital nomad. In case if you don't know, I left California a few days ago. There's a video on that. I link to it in the description of this video. I'm going to Phoenix, Arizona next. So let me know if uh, you want to uh, uh, hang out and tell me why I'm wrong about thinking that Hummer EV is the best electric truck. But it feels really good to be kind of homeless, you know, jewel style. But let's get going on the subject. And just so you know, because I already saw some comments, uh, we're just talking about the three electric trucks that are on the market right now, meaning I've seen one on the road and I've seen all of them. By the way, Tom Malogny is just about to uh, release a video where he compares all three. Uh, and again, I was shocked that the Hummer EV was not the winner, but he's driven all three trucks for at least 2,000 miles. So... He definitely knows what he's talking about, but we're going to have a discussion about that. Uh, of course, honorable mention to the three other electric trucks that come in, uh, that are coming on the market in the next, what, about a year. Uh, one that should be in production now is the Lordstown uh, Endurance, uh, then Chevy Silverado in spring and Tesla Cybertruck, I'm assuming in about a year. But we're talking about the Rivian R1T, uh, Ford F-150 Lightning, and which I think is the best one is Hummer EV. Now, uh, let's talk about <laughs> the poll uh, that I've conducted last night. I think it's been, it's been um, uh, some time. And I got to tell you, you guys definitely surprised me because more than half, more than half of you said it's a Rivian R1T. Well, I guess their marketing campaign of not allowing influencers like me at their uh, media events so we don't say anything uh, negative about the truck is really working. So kudos to Rivian PR department. But all right, guys. Well, humor me here. Let me know in the live chat or in the comment section when we repost this video. Why do you believe Rivian R1T or whichever truck you choose is the best one? Now, first of all, let me tell you how I came to this conclusion. Uh, and I've kind of looked at four different categories, which I think are the most important here. One is range. Now, obviously, when we're talking about any electric car, the range is kind of important. But when it comes to electric trucks, I think it's twice as important because, you know, just in case if you decide to, you know, use it as an actual truck and, for example, haul stuff, you know, the range can get cut off by half. And when you're hauling stuff and you're going long distance, the range becomes even more important. So... The range is first, then of course charging, um, as we've discussed before in the live stream with Tom and uh, I've stated many times that charging is the biggest sort of issue with electric vehicles right now because they still refuel much slower than the gas ones. Uh, then the user interface. After all, these electric trucks are still you know, software pieces on the wheels and I think user interface is very important. And, I, as a, uh, you know, ID4 driver have suffered uh, from having a really, really bad software in mind. I've released a video about that. And number four, which I know is subject subjective, is looks. Now, we're not talking about the price because, you know, we're basically comparing the top of the line versions that are on the market right now. They're still kind of in the ballpark. So I think we're okay there. And I'm definitely not comparing zero to 60 because that's not what these trucks are for. Um, all right. Now. Let's talk about the looks first. And yes, I know it's very subjective, right? It's kind of picking your uh, uh, electric truck or electric car is kind of picking your girlfriend or wife, right? I mean, some of us are frunk men, right? Some of us like big frunks and we cannot lie. That is, I think, the remix by uh, Sir, Sir 
uh, charge a lot. Uh, you should check it out. And some of us, uh, you know, um, uh, prefer nice tailgates. I'm just saying there is no sort of right way of looking at it, but I'll tell you mine. Uh, to me, Hummer EV is by far best looking. It is a very manly truck, if you ask me, but also with some design. Now, I know I'm very much aware that I'm telling you about the manly truck while wearing a pink shirt and a pink watch, but that's just my opinion. Now, the Rivian, I love the way the Rivian looks on the back, but on the front, I kind of always thought that looks like, you know, a frog, just somebody stepped on it, you know, like, and it's just a lot of people told me they are not that sort of happy with how it came out, even though it looks exactly like the prototype. Um, and then, um, well, the Ford F-150 Lightning, um, it's, it just looks like a regular Ford F-150 truck. And it is essentially the only one here not built on an electric platform, kind of a conversion project uh, uh, for from uh, Ford F-150. That's why they were able to get on the market so quickly um, and make the, uh, so many of them. So, all right. Uh, to me, Hummer EV just looks bad. Again, correct me if you think I'm wrong. Uh, but let's get to the range. And uh, if we're talking about EPA range, you know, Hummer EV is a clear winner, 329 uh, miles. And then uh, Ford is uh, the second with 320. And then Rivian at 314. I know they're all coming up with the versions that are going to be longer. But again, talking about what we got right now on the roads. Now, Tom has conducted his own test and he'll I'll tell you about it a little bit later and obviously check out his video that's going to be coming up on his YouTube channel, also linked in the description of this video. Uh, and you just absolutely must subscribe if you haven't already. Um, he actually clocked it at, uh, uh, you know, go much further. Well, not much further, but definitely further than the EPA rating. So again, in a very important category of the range, uh, Hummer EV is the winner. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to charging. And you know, again, we'll talk to Tom about it because he is an expert in charging. But from what I understand, he wasn't able to evaluate Hummer EV as much. And he'll tell you about it why. But if we're just looking at the specs, again, by far the clear winner is Hummer EV because uh, max DC charging rate is 350 kilowatts uh, with, because it's built on their, um, uh, the name escapes me already, uh, a platform. Uh, and the, uh, you know, Rivian is uh, what? Both Rivian and Ford F-150 Lightning are in their 200s. So again, another important category, Hummer EV wins. Uh, this is just math, by the way. This is just using my, oh, my calculator watch is not here. Well, all right. So let's move on to the next one, which is user interface. And I got to tell you, I don't even know if there's competition here. Now, Rivian's is okay, uh, but it still doesn't seem to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, uh, Auto which to me is a huge deal breaker because I don't, I mean, I've always used uh, my phone projection app, uh, which is Android Auto for me, uh, which has actually been a big problem in my uh, ID4, but you must have that. Uh, the Ford F-150 Lightning is actually pretty good. Now they have two versions of the screen. One is like kind of old fashioned, what they used to have, and one is, uh, the one that you've seen in Mustang mach -E. And I really like that interface. It really is re really good, especially the horizontal tiles with the recent features. I definitely dig that. But Hummer EV, okay, first of all, they are using the software from the Fortnite maker Epic Games. And essentially the 3D graphics and just overall design is really, well, epic, really, if you ask me. And I'm a big uh, UX guy because before I did this, full-time, which I still don't believe, I can't believe that I'm doing this. But before that, I was a UX designer and a graphics designer. So user interface is important. And Hummer EV is just, uh, to me, is really, really good. But on top of that, Hummer EV is the only one that has the Android Automotive OS, which is a huge deal. First of all, it's being developed for multiple models. You know, Volvo Polestar has it. Obviously, it has an app store, which has some growth to do because it's kind of a very limited amount of um, uh, very limited uh, amount of apps right now. Uh, and of course, the integration of the uh, Google Maps and so many other things is just, I mean, it, it, it's just perfect. And again, it's being developed by Google for multiple cars. So uh, it is just not going to be one of those things that is just being half-assed or delayed or they didn't have enough software engineers and whatever they're developing it in Germany or whatever. So to me, that is also a big deal. But let me go through one more category before I bring in Tom, uh, which is just a cool feature. 
right? Just that one cool feature you can showcase in front of your neighbors or your friends or your mom. Uh, and it is the crab walk for, for Harmony V. Is it useful? Not really. Is it cool? Hell yeah. And, you know, for F-150, Lightning doesn't really have anything that I would say would be a cool feature. Again, Tom will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, now, the R1T did have two, right? One, the tank turn, and that got pretty much canceled uh, at this point. And another one is their portable kitchen, which I guess is delayed because they are redesigning it. Uh, either way, I think in every category that's important to me, Hummer EV wins. But like I said, you guys disagreed, and so does Tom. So I think this is a good time to bring them in. Tom, um, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, let me hear what you think is the best uh, electric truck is, and most importantly, why. And welcome to the live stream. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Thanks for having me on again. Of course. So, yeah, you know, we had this conversation and we decided to, to, to do the show on it today because I have a video coming out later this week where I compared the three trucks. Now, uh, your followers probably know I own a Rivian R1T and a Ford F-150 Lightning, and I've driven the uh, Hummer EV three times now. With the latest time, just this last week, uh, GM loaned me one for a week, and I drove it about 1,400 miles in that week because I wanted to do a lot of charge recordings, so I have to drive it down to zero in order to be able to charge it again. So I've had a lot of seat time in the Hummer EV now, more than 2,000 miles of driving in my other two vehicles, probably three, four, 5,000 miles. So I know these vehicles really well. So I said, let me do a quick comparison. I, I, I picked 13 different categories. And quite honestly, I went into it not thinking which one was going to be the winner. I just thought of each category as I listed it and picked winners. And the, uh, so it actually surprised me. I thought it was going to be kind of more even. But in the end, the Lightning was the clear winner. It won more than twice as many categories as the Rivian or the Hummer EV did. All right. Now, look, tell me what those categories are, because I mean, in the categories that I just mentioned, you know, Hummer EV was a clear winner, like, you know, range and charging. Yeah. Those are, I feel like, the most important ones. So, yeah, you know, I tried to stay away from some of the things that were really completely suggestive, um, like looks, like appearance, you know, because you might love the way the Hummer looks, somebody else doesn't. So I didn't have appearance in that. And I didn't have user interface either, because after using all three of them, they all are very unique. And uh, I also thought that would be totally subjective if I did that. So that what they weren't my categories, but the lightning one in cost. Uh, because it is the least expensive and you can get lower trim models of it that cost much less than either of the two vehicles. It won in the ride comfort and that wasn't even close. Th that There is no argument in, in that one category. The Lightning's ride quality is much better than both of those vehicles. It is so much softer, so much soother, smoother, quieter. Um, Ford did the best job at reducing noise, vibration and harshness. It's not even close. But it also won on the ability to offload power, which is important for a pickup truck, especially if you're going to use it for a utilitarian vehicle. The, the Lightning has thir uh, uh, 11 power outlets. One of them is 240 volts. The uh, Rivian has four power outlets. They're all 120 volts. The Hummer has two. So if you're out camping somewhere or doing something, there, there's no competition there. The Lightning can power an entire job site if you needed it to. Um, the uh, payload and towing. The uh, Lightning uh, has the most payload. It is a little bit less towing than the Rivian, but I thought that it's 10,000 pounds to 11,000 pounds for the Rivian. The Hummer can only tow, I think, 7,500 pounds. It has the least amount of towing and payload uh, out of all three of these vehicles, even though it's the biggest or the heaviest and most powerful. Uh, the, tr the, uh, the bed and uh, tailgate for functionality, I picked the, uh, the Lightning. The Lightning has a power tailgate that lip that goes down as well as up and it has an integrated step with a handle for you to climb up and down the other two vehicles they'll power down but you have to lift them up and uh the light the uh, the hummer does have an integrated step a small step uh but it's really not quite as useful as i found as as the lightning so the 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 lightning one on that and also on the, um, the frunk the lightning has uh, by far the biggest frunk uh, and uh, it has power outlets in, in the front also that are very useful if you're doing something up front there. So those are all the categories that the Lightning won. And quite honestly, many of them, they won handily. 
All right. Well, I mean, I gotta say, I don't, I don't think Franck is that big of a feature to even have a category. That, I mean, it's definitely not the same weight as for a to pickup me. truck. That's the, you're, you, yeah. you know, you're thinking about going out on Saturday mm -hmm. night to dinner in your Hummer. Like these are trucks; they have to be useful too. Right. Well, okay, but you can't have it both ways. I feel like are we talking about using these trucks as trucks? Because then. I would argue that range is the number one thing, most important thing, and that's where Hummer EV wins. If we're not talking to them uh, about them as, as being used trucks, which most people don't use them most of the time as trucks, you know, then Frank doesn't matter. Then the payload doesn't matter, right? So like from which perspective are we talking about here? Are we using these trucks as real trucks or are we using these trucks just to sit a little higher and feel a little better about ourselves? So since it's me doing the review, it would be how I would use a truck, which is a little mixture of both. I don't, I'm not a private contractor, so it's not full-time work truck, but I do a lot of stuff myself. I'm always picking up wood and lumber and, and I do a lot of work around my house my, my, myself, a lot of uh, the, the groundskeeping. So, you know, I'm loading the trunk up with bags of mulch and things like that, the front, the stuff in the front. So, you know, a little bit of, of both, Alex, it's not... I didn't rate it as a total work truck, but I definitely wanted to include that in in the uh, in the capability. And besides the like, we're talking about the the power outlets. The Ford the, the Lightning also has the intelligent backup power system if you want to buy it, where it can power your house or your office in the case of a power outage. So that was another that was another reason. So yeah, I looked at it as a combination of work and play. Yeah, I, I yeah, you know the whole powering up your house thing. I just I just, I'm not to me that's not even a big feature. It just but that's I guess we can talk about it maybe a little bit later in the show. But I, but 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 you continue kind of I feel like ignoring the two most important ones, the range, right? And again, mm -hmm. I feel it's very important because you know you haul something, right? Which you know looks like you do. It becomes twice as important and charging, where you know Hummer wins handily. I mean. Don't you think those categories are a little bit more important than the front space or the outlets? So the, the range is important. And as you mentioned, I've done multiple range tests on this and the Hummer is the clear range winner. Even though, as you said, it, it's only EPA rate, range rated at nine more miles than my Lightning, I was able to drive it 343 miles on at 70 miles an hour. And my Lightning's good for about 275. So that's a big difference. And the Rivian's good for about 265-ish, but the Rivian has the off-road tires on it. Uh, if if I would have put the street tires on it, the regular all-season tires, I think it might beat the Lightning by a little bit. So, um, but the the Hummer had the giant off-road tires. So, you know, you can't use that argument against if you're comparing it to the Hummer. The Hummer has the best range by far. Now you also mentioned charging. And uh, I, I, I made that inconclusive in my review. And I'll tell you why. There's a lot of things you have to consider when it comes to charging. You just threw out, oh, it can charge at 350, so it's the better charging EV. That's not how charging works, Alex. You, you have to worry about how, many, how much range it adds, not just how much power. The Hummer's incredibly inefficient. You know, on highway speeds, it goes about 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So, and the other vehicles average a little more than two miles per kilowatt hour. So you, what you really have to look at is how much time do I have to stay at this charging station to add X amount of miles? Now the Hummer might actually pump more kilowatt hour into the pack, but if it doesn't go as far as the other vehicles in that same time period of charging, then it's not a better charging EV. And the reason why I didn't declare a winner was because GM software isn't finished on the Hummer EV. I've now charged it six or seven times on DC fast chargers, two different vehicles in different in three different states charging it. And the charging curves are all over the place. I can't get a consistent charging curve and it keeps shutting off. It immediately, when you plug it in, it, it was pulling, I saw 367 kilowatts, most I've ever seen on any vehicle. But after four minutes, it, it overheats and it just shuts off. So that's not good on a road trip either. And, um, uh, you know, I, I've reached out to GM for some comment. I sent them all the data of all my recordings. I'm hoping to get some comment back on them before I put out my Hummer EV charging video. Um, but, you know, you're just focusing on DC fast charging. Most people that own a Hummer are going to charge at home, Alex. They're, they're not going to be doing 500 miles, 600 mile trips all that often, every now and then. And at home, the Hummer can only accept 11.5 kilowatts. It takes almost 24 hours to fully charge a Hummer at its hot, at its fastest home charging rate, almost 24 hours. My Lightning can fully charge in about eight hours at home. And the Rivian takes about 12 hours. 
So now, you know, how's that for you? Are the Hummers by far the best charging EV? Well, okay. So when I talk about charging, I talk about fast charging. And the reason I threw the specs, which, you know, but people I, might fast charge once a, uh, once every two months. Why is that? Why are you making that more important than charging at home? Well, okay. I'll tell you in a second, but first of all, let me just address one, one thing is that I also agree that it's all about how many miles of realistic uh, range per minute the, the DC charging ads or even home charging ads. That's the only measuring tool that I would accept. But because I know you told me before we did the segment is that your results are inconclusive. I kind of had to go with whatever specs they throw at us. However, at the same time, I think, would you agree that the C fast charging Hummer will probably win once the software is all up to par? So uh, what I think is once the software is up to par, the Hummer will be the fastest charging on a DC fast charger of these three vehicles. But 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 let's say you were to get a Hummer and you charge at home and once every month or two, you go on a long trip. What's more important to you? How fast it charges every day when you plug in at home or those two times every month or two when you're on a long road trip? So that that that's you you have to weigh that. There's no that, that's why I said it was inconclusive, because there are so many different ways of looking at this, Alex. And without really me having the complete data, I couldn't pick a winner. All right. Well, by the way, no doubt it's very disappointing, the home charging for the Hummer. Though I got to tell you is that, you know, obviously, you know, that rarely people need to charge 100 percent overnight. Most of the time they don't go beyond what, 20, 30, maybe percentage of their battery. And so that's good enough. But I, I agree. But, but let me cut in for one second. You talked about miles of range per hour yeah. at home. The Hummer can add about 14 or 15 miles of range for every hour it charges at its fastest rate. The lightning can add about 40. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Very disappointing. But, you know, let's switch uh, a, a little bit here before before we take some. Well, you know what? Let's actually take some questions because I saw one where um, Jared the Geek said something that I think we, we can address. The Hummer is the worst because it takes a battery twice as big to meet that range. So here's my theory about it, because here's the thing. People like regular people who are not like us, who are geek out over this thing. And J Jared, the, the geek is also, I'm assuming, geeking out of it. People don't care about the specs and the kilowatts and whatever. They care only about things that they, they, they understand and really need to care about in their daily lives. For example, do you know or care how big the battery in your phone is? You probably don't. You probably don't know what the size of it is or how. You, you only care about how fast this thing is going to charge when you connect it, right? How big is battery compared to what the Apple uh, iPhone has? Nobody cares. So the fact that, you know, they somehow didn't do as good of a job on chemistry and stuff like that, I just don't think people really care about as long as it has that range and you're paying so much for it. So to me, you know, what's under the hood a lot of times, people just don't care with an exception of a few of us, which kind of present company included. Tom, what's your take on that? So I, I think you're right to a degree. The reason why they do care is it costs twice as much per mile to drive a Hummer than it does some of these other trucks, maybe a little bit less than twice as much. But because it's so um, in, inefficient, you need such a big battery, it, you know, you are paying more. And I know that, you know, if somebody pays 110000 for the Hummer, they probably don't care that they're paying a little bit more. But, you know, it does add up. And it, part of the 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 coolness about EVs is how how inexpensive they are to drive. You know, my Hummer, my uh, Lightning at home cost me about twenty dollars to to totally charge, and I can go about two hundred seventy five miles for that. You know, the Hummer for that same two hundred seventy five miles might be thirty thirty five dollars. It it adds up. Yeah, but that's the only reason why I think people would would care, Alex. And the fact that it's going to take longer to charge to get the same amount of miles driven. All right, Tom. Well, uh, thanks for once again joining me. I, um, you know, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm a little jealous that you get to pick between the two electric trucks in front of your house. But uh, I will uh, one day, one day, I will get there as well. Maybe all these super chats will add up to to enough to do that. But uh, thanks once again, and tell us just a little bit before we run out of time about the video that you're going to make on this subject and post uh, in a few days. Okay, yeah, so I'm just doing final editing. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, GM loaned me a, uh, a, a uh, Hummer EV. So I had it here in my driveway alongside my electric 
Lightning and Rivian. So, you know, it was a pretty cool driveway. I don't think these three trucks have been side by side by side for a week, maybe anywhere in the country, you know? So that was a pretty unique thing. So I said, well, I have these here. Let me do a, a rundown, a comparison video, which I did 13 different categories, talked about each one extensively. It's a long video. It's maybe 40 minutes long. So that should be up on my channel, State of Charge, probably by the end of this week. Check it out. I think you're going to enjoy it. And Alex, thanks for having me. Everybody, take care. All right, Tom. And uh, as always, guys, uh, don't forget to click on uh, Tom's uh, link in the description of uh, this uh, video. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Honestly, like we talked before, there is no other channel like that if you are into electric cars. Uh, as of for me, if you guys are interested in why I left California and maybe even leaving the United States, I put a link to that video in the description of this video. I am in Las Vegas this week, most likely heading to Phoenix, Arizona. The part of the fun of this is you know the plan is not to have a plan so we'll see if i end up uh, in phoenix and by the way thank you for everybody inviting me into their homes and using their you know spare bedrooms and chargers uh, as i posted that video i will really try to um maybe meet some of you as i'm heading to uh to those cities uh and i i you can follow me on my uh community tab here on youtube or on instagrams probably even uh, better. All right. I am looking forward to all of your comments as we repost this video the next day. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.